Yeah, you guys didn't think I had it in me, huh? You thought I wasn't gonna make a Halloween video, did you? I'm totally not just branding the next iceberg I was already gonna do as a Halloween video. Making this thing, you know, dated in about three months. Totally not. Would never, couldn't be me. Anyway, today we're taking a look at a new iceberg, and that would be the cancelled and lost horror video games iceberg over on icebergcharts.com. Uh, the iceberg will be linked below as always, and all credit for the iceberg list goes to the original author of the iceberg. Today we're going to be covering the first three layers, since uh, this iceberg's, this, this berg's a little kind of a, kind of a thicky, kind of a thicky berg. I kind of want to uh, fucking kill myself after saying that. Uh, anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and rediscover some of these old lost horror games that you might not know about. Everyone at this point probably knows the story of P.T., otherwise known as Silent Hills. This was uh, meant to be a reboot of the Long Dead series, at least at the time, and uh, this was going to be a collaboration project from a few of the industry's best. However, due to Konami's undying love for gambling, we don't have that awesome-ass game we could have had, and yet we have this thing. Whatever this is. Are you prepared to die for your cause? This was a big L for a lot of the gaming community as the playable teaser that released was very promising featuring some of the scariest gameplay to date. And honestly, in my opinion, I still consider this half hour demo to be unmatched in terms of atmosphere and creepiness uh, in video games. It really is a shame that we won't see anything come from Silent Hills, but I gotta be honest with myself and say I am more than a little hyped to see if anything from PT or Silent Hills will make its way into the new entries that got announced a few months ago. Norman Reedus definitely won't show his monster-filled gullet in the new game, but after Death Stranding, I think we could all use a break from those two guys collaborating. We run. Together. Run? Yeah. Like Mario and Princess Beach. <laughs> oh my god! Oh no! <laughs> Who can write this? No, I actually really like Death Stranding, but I don't know if it was worth the sacrifice of Silent Hills for it, you know? They should have really just let this man cook a couple more years over at Konami so we could have gotten Silent Hills. Sadness was a cancelled horror game that would have released on the Nintendo Wii. The game was seemingly built from the ground up for the Wii, and it would have featured stuff like motion controls. The game took place in Eastern Europe, and you play it as a mother who has to take care of her blind kid after a train derailment. Apparently the kid somehow got blind in the train derailment. It's, it reminds me of uh, little Maddie from uh, the first episode of Daredevil. Somehow he gets the sauce in his eyes. Anyway, after the accident, the game starts, and you kind of have to make your way to safety, dodging things like monsters and killers, all, uh, uh, killers afoot. From a very early trailer for the game, it seems it would have acted as an on-rails type of game where, you, you know, you have to swing the rear remote in a quick time event sequence. This definitely doesn't seem like my type of game, but some think it may have had some potential at some point. I definitely think the story and setting is kind of intriguing, but the gimmicky motion controls would have likely been a... A little stiff and annoying unless unless they were really done right, let's be honest. The game was cancelled due to the development company splitting ways over creative differences. The game was then picked up by western developers and was then being reworked from the ground up for Wii U. Uh, if that doesn't give you an idea of how long this game was in production for. However, due to being stuck in development hell and having to be reworked for the Wii U, the game never came out. It seemed like a pretty ambitious title to me and is kind of a shame that we never got to see anything from it. I guess you could say, you know, I'm feeling kind of the emotion known as sadness from this cancellation. Capcom started the development of Resident Evil 2 almost immediately after Resident Evil 1 released. They had a set a pretty unrealistic release date of March 1997 when the game had just began development the previous year. With a short time window, Capcom was approaching the deadline and decided they weren't happy with the final project and just scrapped it all and started over. They started to build things from the ground up again and delayed the release of the game to make a better product. You know, back when that was a viable strategy in the gaming market. Now, even if a game's delayed, it's like, well, there's a good chance they're just trying to save a piece of shit that's already beyond saving. Regardless, this project was scrapped and is now deemed Resident Evil 1.5, as it has quite a bit of differences from the final release of Resident Evil 2. The biggest difference includes the exclusion of the character known as Claire Redfield, and in her place was a character known as Eliza Walker. 
who was an original character for the game, and wasn't originally related to any of the pre-existing characters like Claire is. There are also characters that are present in the final game, who in the beta played a way bigger part. Take the character Marvin Branagh, you know, the guy you meet up in the, in the police station pretty early on. He's one of the first people Leon talks to. Apparently, he wasn't supposed to be killed off, at least so early, and even helped Leon and Ava escape in the beta. There's actually a bunch of differences, and if you want to see a list of them, you can check out the demo online that leaked back in 2013. Apparently in the beta, the scene where Mr. X busts through the wall, he came out doing the gritty. I, 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 I don't know why they cut that part. That's way better. Left 4 Dead 2 was and still is one of the best zombie shooters on the market, especially if you play on PC with the modding capabilities. However, no amount of mods could have stacked up to the potential of this cancelled DLC, fellas. If any of you remember the cult hit known as Cabin in the Woods that released back in 2012, then you might appreciate this entry. Cabin in the Woods for me as a movie was a little overrated when it came out, but I can't appreciate it, what it was trying to do for the horror genre at the time. I can also appreciate the fresh take on a horror movie and the fact it doesn't take itself, you know, that seriously most of the time. The movie had several horror references, including movies and even video games. The lab was a big part of the movie where they they stored all these horrific monsters and cells, and in these scenes we can just see how many references this movie actually had to offer. One of the more odd ones that always struck me as strange was the boomer that was featured in one of the cubes. The boomer is one of the special infected from the Left 4 Dead universe, and I always just thought it was just a simple nod to the legendary Left 4 Dead games, but the reference actually goes a lot deeper. After playing the original Left 4 Dead, the Cabin in the Woods directors approached Valve and wanted to create a DLC campaign for their movie. The DLC would have had players walking not only in the cabin, but also the labs underneath. Not only that, but it would also featured creatures from the movie, which actually would have been really cool. Even if I'm not the biggest fan of fucking Cabin in the Woods, being able to fight off some of these movie reference monsters they had in the movie, in the Left 4 Dead universe, that would be really cool. However, it never happened. And that's due to the film's development struggles and eventual bankruptcy. The DLC was silently cancelled by Valve. And after the film was picked back up by Lionsgate, the movie was resurrected and released a few years later. However, this was too little too late for Valve. They fucking threw out the big middle finger. Said Gaben's like, he shoved a couple Crystal's burgers down his gullet and was like, fuck you guys. Y'all are out. And uh, the DLC is still missing in action. Perhaps someday we'll, you know, at least get a leak or something of early development if not a playable demo from the campaign that would be cool but there really is no way to know just how far the campaign got in production especially if the movie was in a uh, 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 deep water if you know what i mean heavy rain i should have said heavy rain that wasn't the campaign it was heavy rain they were in heavy rain i was trying to make a left for dead joke i forgot about the campaign name The gaming industry is all too familiar with big aspirations and short turnaround expectations, and this was nowhere more present than ports. This is still the case nowadays where any ports of games we get are the lowest effort because, you know, they'll know they'll sell. Nostalgia sells, baby, let's go, rack them up. However, back in the day, we were getting some pretty interesting and ambitious ports, specifically on systems like the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. While it was easier to say port like a Super Nintendo platformer game, taking on a 3D game would be quite the task, but one that Capcom would, they wanted it to attempt when they outsourced the port of uh, Resident Evil 1 for the Game Boy Color. Following the success of the first Resident Evil and the success of the Game Boy line of handhelds at the time, Capcom saw it fit to try and fit all of Mr. X's big ass shoulders onto the 6x6 screen. But on the real, this would have been a really cool game if it had ever come to full fruition. However, due to an insane ask of porting a PS1, you know, style 3D game to a Game Boy? and a short turnaround time at that, the game ended up being canned. I mean, it, it, it just could not not be. However, not all was lost because from the ashes rose Resident Evil Gaiden. And no, this isn't a Ninja Gaiden crossover, although I'm sure that was thrown out in the boardroom after the port was canned. Resident Evil Gaiden, rather, was a game that was developed from the ground up for the Game Boy Color, so it ended up working a lot better on the handheld rather than trying to, you know, struggle your way through the shittiest port of Resident Evil we'll ever see. Yeah, I'll take Tears of the Kingdom on a Tiger Electronic watch next, please. Thanks, guys.
Dead Space is one of my favorite survivor horror games and the recent remake cemented that even more. With that remake's success, many are hoping for the announcement of a development of the sequel's remake, at least Dead Space 2. While I don't like the second one anywhere near the amount I liked the first game, more Dead Space that looks like this is always welcome for me. However, we almost had a demake, so to speak, of Dead Space 2. This demake was going to come out for everyone's favorite standard definition console, the Nintendo Wii. I really shouldn't use the word demake though, as those are actual things nowadays, you know, purposely demade. But this was going to be a stripped version of the base Dead Space 2 to allow it to run on the same hardware capabilities as a high quality kitchen scale. Some limitations were going to be needed just off rip, but in the end it seems like it was too much for the dev team and they canned it only a few years after it was confirmed to have even existed. The existence of the port was confirmed by two devs that were working on the game and listed it on their LinkedIn page. For that reason, and assuming the game didn't get very far in development, we don't have any images or much visually from the game's development, really only the idea that this existed at some point in time. With the semi-unsuccessful Dead Space Extraction doing lower sales than EA probably expected, they may have also canned the project due to low user interest from the game on the Nintendo Wii. Regardless, to have a Wii port of this game to go back to and compare it to the base game would be really cool actually. This happened a lot back in the era where games used to be released on, you know, every platform imaginable. All advertised themselves as the same game, but depending on what system you bought it on, the game vastly changed. I would have loved to see some of the climactic events from Dead Space 2 and what ways they would have, you know, fucking rigged them to work on the Wii. Can you say great value, Dead Space? I'm an advocate for all of these lost games throughout the years. I feel like no game is always worse than an average game in most cases that is. However, in the case of Doom 4, I much would have rathered what happened happen because it gave birth to the resurrection of the Doom series that we know today. Doom 3 released back in 2004 to decent to positive reviews for some, and it seemed the series was going well enough for a sequel that started development a few years after Doom 3's release. Confirmation of this development was made at QuakeCon 2007, but after a few quiet years players started to question the development status of Doom 4, and in 2010 the main development lead said the game was still being worked on and when the public finally saw it they quote, love it. Y'all are gonna love it. However, it wouldn't be much time before the game was leaked online and seen as a cheap Call of Duty clone, with some fans even calling it Call of Doom. Yeah, we weren't really creative back back then with the memes, I gotta be honest. This was because of the scrap, fast-paced gameplay Doom was known for, and substituting a slower cover-based shooting system akin to Call of Duty, and their game that released around the same time, uh, Rage, which definitely had slower combat sections. It's unknown the reason Doom 4 was eventually quietly canned and reworked into Doom 2016, but I do believe this negative reception to the leaked gameplay had a huge effect on that decision. There is supposedly a playable build of Doom 4 that is out there somewhere, and is in somewhat of a finished state. From the gameplay we did get, we can see a lot of good ideas that would have made their way into future ID games like Rage and even Doom 2016. Uh, the most notable of these is the satisfying melee system which was deemed the sync melee in Doom 4. This is the really satisfying melee system from uh, Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal just in its uh, infant form, you know. Doom 4 would have likely been as disappointing as everyone was predicting back then, and I am happy that we got a reboot in the way of Doom 2016, but seeing the gameplay makes me curious what a full-fledged Doom Call of Duty style game would have been like. Then I realized games like Bulletstorm exist, and that kind of meshed the two genres together already, so yeah, just go play Bulletstorm or Doom 3 or some shit, I don't know. And I'm not saying Bulletstorm is bad, I'm saying it's, it's, it's probably the best version of like Call of Duty and Doom combined you can get. Maybe there's a better one. Leave your comments down below. As with most games in this iceberg, Resident Evil 4 went through what is called development hell. Which if you don't know is when a game just takes a long time to come out due to things like creative differences, scrap projects, and so much more. Resident Evil 4 is known to have existed in many states before launching as we know it today back in 2005 and again with the remake in 2023. The most known early version of Resident Evil 4 is the one that was eventually turned into the first Devil May Cry. This version of Resi 4 was apparently too action oriented and Capcom decided to just rework the game into Devil May Cry instead of canceling it altogether. Therefore, they went back to the drawing board with Resi 4. This version of the game featured Leon as the main character, however the setting and the story of the game seemed vastly different from the final version. As per Lost Media Wiki, apparently the story centered on the assault of our heroes to Umbrella Europe. 
Moreover, Leon would have probably been infected and possibly wielded supernatural powers. This sounded pretty ambitious for the series at the time, but it wouldn't end up being the last change, as in 2003 the game was shown at that year's E3 and the trailer showed a much more polished, updated version of the game, albeit still different from the final product we still have. This version is often compared more to the stylings of Silent Hill, as there was even more emphasis on the uh, supernatural, past the general Resident Evil zombies, you know. Definitely feels more along the lines of a typical Resi game, at least compared to the original draft, but it was still a far cry from what the final Resident Evil 4 we have is. There was a confirmed third beta that featured zombies, but this was never released to the public, but honestly we can assume that this is how the start of the final Resident Evil 4 we know now uh, actually started. As for if any of these betas are playable, that's a fat no, sorry guys. At one point one of the betas was remade, but the download link is broke. Ice cream machine broke, let's get a new one. Me personally, I'm glad Resident Evil 4 clawed its way out of development hell and came out as a great example of why sometimes taking your time in the gaming industry works out. Hmm, maybe that's something, you know, some of these other companies can, can take a note from, you know? City of the Dead is a canned video game that was supposed to release back in 2006 on the PlayStation 2. This was a video game to tie into the John Romero Dawn of the Dead series and was attempting to bank off the success of the reboot of the movie in 2004. The game was going to take place on a fictional island in which a zombie invasion broke out after an accident dealing with the government in cadavers. You know the old government, how they love their fucking cadavers. So yeah, you're basically tasked with taking down this infection all while surviving the apocalypse on this random island. You feel like you won a Mr. Beast contest except to turn to shit real quick. There was a short trailer shown at E3 2005 that seemingly showed short clips of gameplay, a first person zombie shooter that, for all things considered, looks pretty generic to me. Due to funds running out and the development studio closing, the game and its planned sequels were canned. There aren't any playable builds of the game out there and the only existence we have of the game is through this 8 pixel by 8 pixel video of the trailer from 2005. So yeah, let's full screen this guys and let's enjoy this. You can't see what the fuck's going on. If I just showed a bunch of these images on the screen one by one, and then threw up like a multiple choice of different developers that could have made these concept images, I bet you wouldn't choose answer E, which I did hide from you guys, but regardless is Rareware. That's right, Rareware was in the works to make a pretty promising and ambitious horror game. I might be a little biased, I'd love me some Rareware, but this thing looked pretty cool. Development for Sundown began in 2006, and through its development it was being pushed onto the back burner by Rareware, who had several other projects that they were spending their time on. Later in 2010, it speculated that the game wasn't in fact cancelled yet and instead was being reworked to the release on the Xbox 360. As this was kind of around the time Rareware was starting to get acclimated to their new home at Microsoft. You know, the boys had to had to really stretch their wings in there for a minute. However, due to growing pains and Rareware short resources, the game was canned and we, all we have to really go off the existence of this game is concept images that you're seeing right here. And these actually come to us from Rare Rare themselves through the celebration game known as Rare Replay, in which they reference a bunch of Rare Rare's behind the scenes stuff, including this game. Some of these monster designs seem really ambitious and seem like up there with the likes of Left 4 Dead or something when they're special infected. That combined with the gameplay of Rare Rare games up until that point, I mean this just seems like something that would have been a, a slam dunk. Like there's an equal chance it could have sucked ass to be honest, but I still think there was enough here in the making to really shoot Rare Rare to a different genre of video game development at the time. However, they wouldn't get to make their horror game in the traditional sense, but I think you could all make a pretty good case in considering some of their, some of their releases as horrifying for sure. At one point in time, Telltale Games was at the peak of their gaming production, having their hands in all the major series and bringing them all to an interactive video game format. Still waiting on my Telltale Breaking Bad series over here, guys. This was a great way to get already great stories from TV and movies and give them a little extra what-if scenarios or sometimes just give the player full control of the main story with choices to change in it along the way. Regardless, you can't argue that this was the formula that worked for Telltale and their fans, at least until it didn't. Disaster struck the company in 2019 where they had a ton of layoffs and eventually fully closed the studio and canned several projects they were working on at the time, including a video game version of the hit Netflix show Stranger Things. 
The concept for a Stranger Things Telltale game was actually proposed all the way back in 2016 following the show's first season, but the Telltale higher-ups rejected this idea as they only saw the show as a quote bunch of kids riding on bikes, which is just the most lazy, barely looked at one screenshot from the show's synopsis I've ever fucking seen. Regardless, after a change of management, the project was finally taken on and it began in 2017. However, it didn't get super far before it was canned along with everything else Telltale had. There are a few concept images from the game, and we know that you would have played as the main character Will from the show. The game even showed some first-person gameplay, even one where you're apparently facing down a demigorgon in the Upside Down. Looked like pretty cool shit here. However, we would never get this lucky to get a full-fledged Telltale Stranger Things game. Rather, uh, the only Stranger Things video games we have is this 2D isometric game and the DLC for Dead by Daylight. And man, these guys got rocked by the ugly stick. Holy shit, what happened to you? This next entry is a story of fandom, thievery, and even engineering? Yeah, you'll find all that and more in the story of this development of the game known as Hellraiser for NES. I actually talked about this game in a random Iceberger video I did before, and the story behind it kind of always intrigued me. Honestly, kind of stuck with me after I talked about it. Basically, a super fan of the film known as uh, Hellraiser wanted to develop an unofficial Hellraiser game for the NES. Color Dreams was the name of the development studio that started work on this project, and their other projects were... Let's just say shady, to say the least. Wait, is that Sudan? The development of the game already started out on a bad foot as per uh, Lost Media Wiki. Quote, the game was developed using an improved version of the Wolfenstein 3D engine. Lawton was aware that the NES couldn't handle the engine needed to create the game, so he hired an engineer named Ron Reasley. You know, Ron be risen, risen up these other wizards. So while the game was being developed, there was something called a super cart being developed alongside it just to run the game on the NES. The cartridge ended up working, but a huge component of um, a really big reason as to why they were using the cartridge being uh, these impressive light switching effects that the NES just couldn't do back in the day. Uh, those just didn't work for some reason. Hey! Hey! Look over here! Look at that! Next, they decided to play with the idea of using an extra accessory you would plug into your NES akin to the memory storage expansion cards for the uh, N64. Except working with several games, this thing would have just worked with one. One shitty Hellraiser adaptation. Do we even really need to ask at this point why this one was canned? Everything was stacked against it, but the, probably the biggest wall in terms of releasing the game was the fact you would need to spend more than a base NES game at the time, whether it be for the Super Kart or the add-on for the uh, NES itself, both of which many people likely wouldn't have been willing to do for one fucking game, especially if it was just a shitty 8-bit Hellraiser game. The game actually doesn't sound like it would have been that bad, especially for an NES game. It would have featured a player trapped inside the box featured from the movie. The player would then solve puzzles inside said box that would affect the outside of the box and progressing it until the player eventually escapes the box. Overall though, I don't know if we were missing much, and I don't even think this game got that far in development as all we have to reference from this game are a few promotional images here and there. I talk a lot of Rareware on the channel and usually I'm referencing their good products like Donkey Kong or Banjo or stuff like that, you know? However, before they were known for those gems, they were out there teaming up with the likes of LJN. Yeah, if you don't know this guy's face, then you probably aren't super familiar with LJN, but basically they were the Ubisoft of the NES era. Just shit on shit, year after year. A Nightmare on Elm Street suffered the same LJN fate, even though Rareware was at the helm in terms of development. You know, looking back on the pre-release content for the game, it reveals that the game didn't always suck ass, and actually seemed fun at one point in time. It said in the original version of the game the player would control Freddy Krueger, and the goal was to kill all of the teenagers in the game to retrieve his bones. Because, you know, you usually like to keep up with a few things, maybe your cell phone, your wallet definitely, and then yeah, my fucking bones. In the final version of the game, you play as default team number four, and it definitely sucks way more than if you were able to play Freddy killing these little indistinguishable children. It could be possible that this was due to Nintendo not wanting a game where you play as a deranged serial killer in their game lineup, but there has never been an official explanation as to why this was such a dramatic change, and why it turned out to be ass. Yes. The Nintendo Wii was a gold mine to some, and for others it was an opportunity to stretch their creativity. However, that creativity would usually hit a wall. A big wall. 
and that wall is a huge indestructible wall of shitty hardware. The prospects of the Nintendo Wii seemed promising at the time as they were the only ones who really got motion controls down to a convenient state anyway. I mean, there were others, but Jesus Christ. Therefore, due to the Wii's success, it got eyes of several developers who wanted to make exclusive Wii games for their series, and one of the series was Silent Hill. Now, immediately hearing this, it doesn't sound like the worst idea ever because there were horror games that genuinely worked on Nintendo Wii, but this is kind of a different story. From the jump, this game was never going to run on the Wii. At least to the degree that the devs wanted it to anyway. This is the biggest reason the game was canned after all. The details this game was going to have. I mean, I'm not even confident this thing fully fleshed out would run well on Nintendo Switch. The game was going to feature a new protagonist to the series who is going to visit her parents after a psychotic episode to clear her head a little bit. She ends up getting lost in a blizzard and follows an ambulance to try to get out of it and it ends up uh, in the town of Silent Hill. It seemed pretty promising and typical for a Silent Hill story. The game was going to feature the obvious abundance of motion controls because, you know, we. However, the most impressive system they wanted to implement is known as a psychological profile that they would change with the events of the game and apparently affect the character throughout the story. Not only that, but if the player had a stable internet connection, it would detect things like uh, real-time weather and even update the news somehow during the game. I don't know about you guys, but I always used to get my news straight from my Nintendo Wii, so this would have been a nice convenient way to get it straight through the, the world of Silent Hill. Yeah, let me hear all the disastrous wars going on right now through a, through a Silent Hill Wii game. This sounded like a promising horror title for the Wii, honestly, but alas, the game was scrapped and later turned into Silent Hill Shattered Memories, which there's not a lot of this game left in that game. It really just served as the foundation. Any fan of the Alone in the Dark series will tell you how rocky the series has been for a while now. I've never been into the series much myself, but I'm on the sidelines rooting for you guys and hoping this reboot that's coming out will do something for the series. Something good. This remake wasn't the first attempt at bringing the Alone in the Dark series to a newer audience though, as there were several projects cancelled with the Alone in the Dark name, starting with the direct sequel to the mainline games known as Alone in the Dark 5, which would have been a direct sequel to Alone in the Dark The New Nightmare. The game was never actually officially announced by the devs as they were unsure of the market at the time and decided to keep it kind of close to the chest. However, thanks to the leaked images, we could see the game definitely existed at some point in time and looked uh, well into the development process. The second cancelled Alone in the Dark game we know even less about and was known as Alone in the Dark The Abductions. This was supposed to be the phoenix that rose from the ashes of Alone in the Dark 5, but alas, it had just as many growing pains if not more. The only existence of this game is through these character model images, as the game barely even got started in development before it was canned. Seeing some of the previous games in the series, and even ones that came after this one, I gotta say, maybe we're not missing so much with these cancelled projects, but I could be wrong, I really don't know much about the Alone in the Dark series. Another series that I had a hard time is Silent Hill. I mean, we've already talked about one other Silent Hill game on this list, two, Psych. I forgot PT was as well. But as mentioned before, with the new games coming out, I, I, I do have hope again for the series. However, looking back on the series, we can reveal some serious growing pains even before the disaster that happened with PT on PS4. If we take it back a generation before, we can see that the PlayStation 3 almost had its own Silent Hill, built from the ground up from the devs who developed the PSP and Wii Sports, Wii Sports version of Silent Hill. <laughs> yeah, we got Pyramid Head out there fucking playing tennis. This was still very early on for the developers as they were at the pitching phase when the game was canned. This was due to Konami going with another developer studio, but we still have the tech demo that Climax Studios brought to Konami to look at, and they even used the protagonist Travis from the PSP Silent Hill Origins. However, this was just a placeholder character according to the uh, devs. Obviously, we didn't get a whole lot of gameplay or even a final alpha build for the game, but from what we do see, the developers seem confident in their ability to create a home console Silent Hill for PS3, and it's a shame we didn't get to see some of their ideas come to fruition, because damn, it's gotta be way better than whatever Konami was doing with the series at the time. Holy shit. Mm. 
Fear Effect Eferno was meant to be the third in the Fear Effect series, which started back on PlayStation 1. Fear Effect Inferno was slated to release on the PlayStation 2 in late 2002, but nearing the beginning of 2003, it seemed the game was getting quieter and quieter in terms of news, until eventually the game was canned as a result of a new stringent QA program Eidos was testing out at the time, according to IGN. The game had a good bit of work done, and it was even shown at E3 2002. However, this wasn't going to save the classic horror series from being cancelled. Regardless, we can get a taste of what the game may have been like through the leaked cinematics on YouTube and other video sharing sites. Rip Fear Effect Man and all of its fans. I've never met one of you in real life, but I hope one day you guys get a decent remake or reboot. Until then, let's move on. Redwood Falls would have been a horror FPS that released on the 360 and PS3 back in that era. The game was developed by Kuju Entertainment, who supplied a promising looking demo tape of the game in action. This intrigued many and the game seemed to have a lot of ambition behind it. However, when Kuju Entertainment was bought by Catalyst Group, another game development company, they were no longer interested in the IP and canned the project and all the work on it thus far. I have to wholeheartedly disagree with Catalyst Group on this one. And because this game looked really promising and it kind of reminds me of like a condemned criminal origins type of game maybe but taking place maybe out in the woods it just seemed like a very out of nowhere horror game that would have struck up probably in the early 360 ps3 era and it, it, it could have made an impact i i think it could have the concept images for some of the enemies look super grotesque and would have been fucking creepy to see in the full game the game resembled that of the movie The Thing, and it looks like it might have been an attempt at bringing that type of world to the uh, gaming universe. This even had one of the great minds from Hello Games working on the game in its early stages. So yeah, this game might have had a rough as fuck launch, but at least it would have been great in like, I don't know, 2010 or something. Now, that's a really bad No Man's Sky joke, because that game blew chunks when it first released. Anyway, I think Redwood Falls could have made a promising first entry for a new IP that could have spawned a small series of games. I mean, this had much of a chance of getting canned as like Alan Wake or the aforementioned Condemned. So I, I'd like to think there's a universe out there where we're getting a long-awaited Redwood Falls 2, kind of like we're getting Alan Wake 2 this year. So far, we've seen a decent number of famous horror movie villains attempting to get their own games and... Gotta say, it's not working out for the boys. That also unfortunately includes Chucky, who would have had his own game by the name of Chucky Wanna Play. The game was being developed in 2012 and was seeking its funding from a Kickstarter in which they failed to raise the appropriate funds. Like, they really failed, guys. The Kickstarter was calling for a little over 900 thou, and the game raised uh, $585 with 19 backers. With this low backing, the game actually still saw some decent development time, as the game can actually be seen in somewhat a playable state on the uh, Internet Archive website. The game would have had the player could take control of Chucky himself, the small murdering doll, and your objective is exactly that. Murder. There were several NPCs you could stab in the face, and yeah, you'd literally stab him in the face. That was like one of the selling points. The game's story, or much else beyond the gameplay, is still a mystery, but this concept doesn't seem like the worst idea for a game. Of course, the way the developer went about it probably wasn't the best, especially since most of the funding would have went to the license. However, if we ever saw a smaller independent Chucky game later down the line, I actually think it could work. And no, I'm not even going to acknowledge the shitty Unity Chucky games that are plaguing the internet all over the place, because I mean, if you're not a YouTuber trying to make that month's light bill, are you really going to be playing Chucky the good guy? No. No. Give me Chucky Wanna Play. Most of the entries we've taken a look at have been fairly recent cancellations, but this entry is actually referencing a cancelled arcade cabinet of all things. Yeah, that's right. They really said, never mind, and just chucked probably 50 of these bitches down a turnpike or something. Nah, but this Gremlins arcade game has very little out there in terms of development footage or even gameplay. The only known footage of the game exists on YouTube and shows the rumored prototype of the game. Gremlins definitely didn't have the best luck out there with video games, as there was another canned Gremlins game that was supposed to come out in a couple decades later, 
uh, Gremlins for PS2 and GameCube. The game was being developed throughout the years of the early 2000s, and it seemed like the developer LSP was making great progress on it. The game was an interesting take on the typical movie tie-in third-person action game we all knew too well back in the day. As per Lost Media Wiki, the game would have, quote, featured gameplay that was squad-based third-person shooter, similar to games such as uh, Conflict, Desert Storm, and Freedom Fighters, with each playable characters having a division of additional Mogwai or Gremlins at their disposal who can uh, issue commands to assist the player in battle. And man, that sounds crazy ambitious and weirdly like it would work. The game was being slated for a late 2003 release, but shortly after this announcement, the game was confirmed to be cancelled, and several reasons were given, but the biggest was the merger of LSP with HIP Games. However, the game has a lot to look at in terms of evidence and just stuff left behind. There are images from the gameplay, and even the official box art is out there. There's videos of the gameplay online to view. However, there's still no playable ROM of the game that's leaked online, unfortunately. This may have been one of the actually few good movie tie-in games we got back in the day, and I feel like this was more of a passion project from the devs instead of a weird cash-in. Because, guys, you were a little late on that front if you're trying to make a little bit of money based on the Gremlins name. I'm not 100% sure why this entry is on here as the list says the game is lost, but it's still fully downloadable online, so perhaps this was released after the iceberg was made, uh, but I'd like to say there are downloads for Resident Evil Degeneration online. Resident Evil Degeneration is two things. It is a CG Resident Evil movie, and it is also a mobile phone game that released back in 2008. It was pretty unassuming and was part of the weird mobile game renaissance before developers found out they can spam the user with 2,000 ads a second and make money that way. You guys remember this shit, right? You get like a $15, $20 Apple card for Christmas or some shit, and you go download a ton of these shitty app versions of your favorite PS3 games. Nah man, couldn't be me nowadays. Yeah, that Walking Dead game is free, but is it really? Is it really? Is it even fucking fun? Probably not. I don't think Resident Evil Degeneration was fun in the general sense, especially for a Resi game, but damn, at least I wasn't being advertised Kleenex or some shit between Leon getting his ass eaten by zombies. Grab Kleenex. Kiriyami was going to be a psychological horror game that was going to be exclusive to the PS3. The game was being pitched by Grasshopper Studios and led by the legendary game developer Suda. This was before their breakout hit known as uh, No More Heroes, and many believe the success of that series is what landed the last nail in the coffin for Kiriyama. The game was to take place in a mysterious European castle with a strange village accompanying it nearby. You know, sound a little familiar, guys? Yeah, me too. Kiriyami had a similar gameplay light system to Alan Wake, where the light would have aided the player throughout the game, while the dark is where the player was at their most vulnerable. In an interview about the game, Suda stated, Kiriyami's ideas are not about violence, but fundamental problems in the human mind, which may find some conflict with the rating system, though I expect the rating level will be quite high for Kiriyami. I also expect the PS3 to be mainly purchased by... Uh, an adult audience. I'm making a game for an adult audience, one that shows what life is and what being a human is. So it seemed the game was going to take a unique take on the horror genre and focus more on the human mind aspect of horror. Obviously, this isn't the first time this would have been done, but perhaps the first time it would have been done to this degree and with the suit of stank on it we all know and love. The game would have featured a cell shaded style similar to that of Killer7, and this would have been interesting to see which ways they could have used this unique art style to help with things like the atmosphere of the game. Unfortunately though, in an interview in 2009, Suda stated, it's not even in development right now. Gotcha, bitch. We aren't even really working on it. We've just been talking about it. But there has been no time to work on it. This is why many assume that the development company's other more successful projects took more precedence over Kirami. But if they ever went back to this idea, I think it would be very lucrative for them if, if done right. Black Death sounds like something that would have wiped out a bunch of people who look like this. And it probably did, but today Black Death is a game that was being developed by a small studio known as Darkworks. They are most notable for working on the Alone in the Dark game, The New Nightmare on PS1. Black Death seemed to be one of those last hoorah for a development company as they were staring down the liquidation barrel. Black Death was the fourth canned project and the final cancel project for the company before they eventually closed, so can't say they didn't see it coming. This was the straw that broke the camel's back, but not before they got some decent mileage out of that old fucking camel. Black Death has some prototype gameplay 
and different screenshots to dive into the game's details, and the game actually looked somewhat promising. Viewing this nowadays, it looks like any generic horror FPS, but back then, what this gameplay trailer shows and what the developers had planned for the game would have at least made the game stand out amongst other horror FPS games. Too bad the game lost funding and the dev company finally closed. If we were talking about world records for cancelled video game projects, Dark Works would definitely be in the running for the top of that list. I feel like I could even make a whole iceberg just on their unfinished projects. Not to not to dunk on the boys too hard. Black Death definitely should have been given a better chance so the dev company could, you know, try to redeem themselves, but alas, money. As the famous poet Eugene once said, money, money, money. Dino Crisis was an early attempt at making Resident Evil more action-oriented and was met with a pretty great success upon its first release on PlayStation 1 back in 1999. With the success of both the original Dino Crisis and the Game Boy Color, Capcom wanted to try and pull a Resident Evil 1 and try and port the game over to Game Boy Color once again. Of course, since we're talking about the game on this list, it means it never came to fruition, but this game actually ended up getting a lot more uh, further along than the Resident Evil Game Boy port. However, if you remember me mentioning the Resident Evil Gaiden Game Boy Color, game earlier. That is what this uh, Dino Crisis game ended up being the foundation for. A dev actually spoke on the game's cancellation saying, as I recall, we produced a very impressive demo for the Game Boy Color version of Dino Crisis. Resident Evil was already in development as an over-ambitious port of the PlayStation version. This was scrapped and Capcom asked us to do a bespoke game with our Dino Crisis engine, which that game would end up turning into Ninja Ninja Gaiden Evil, whatever the fuck it was called. The game developer goes on to say that the game was playable and it was actually running pretty well. This isn't the only attempt at bringing Dino Crisis series to the Game Boy Color as another dev company known as Fluid Studios started up a Dino Crisis Game Boy Color port of their own. This version of the game seemed to be much further along in terms of development. And most of the screenshots shown from this are, are from this project. Unfortunately, we wouldn't get any form of Dino killing action on the Game Boy Color but if this project was playable and it seemed like it may have been actually a good Game Boy Color port, all things considered. Well, that was today's iceberg. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys have a great Halloween if you do celebrate it, and I will see you guys for part two real soon. Also, thank you so much for uh, 10,000 subscribers. That's fucking wild. Uh, I was I was scripting this a few days ago before I hit 10,000 subscribers, and just based on uh, my growth on a day-to-day -day basis. I figured by the time I sat down to record this, I would be over 10,000 subscribers, and I'm, I'm like 50 subscribers over 10,000, so that's that's wild, man. Uh, thank you guys so much. I'm glad some of my videos are doing better getting them out to you guys, but um, it's you guys who are subscribing and sticking around and watching, so I appreciate everybody who's, uh, who's out there fucking with my shit, man. That's crazy, and I do plan to talk more maybe in a future video about it, but I just wanted to uh, tag uh, a quick thanks at the end of this video, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys uh, very soon for part two of this iceberg, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks for watching.